Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Best Stock Picks. My name is Stock Picks. <laughs> My name is Pete Renzulli. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. Hope everybody's safe at home. Uh, apparently, the world is starting to reopen a little bit, depending on where you are looking at headlines. It's starting to reopen a lot in certain places. Today's stock picks are going to be interesting because we... If you were day trading yesterday, and we saw some vicious selling in the middle of the day um, where the NASDAQ was actually lagging, and nice job by Tom in our chat room uh, noticing that before the market imploded intraday. Um, and if you're not sure what I mean by that, I just want to take it just a little bit deeper. If you go back in history to the stock market, there's something called Dow Theory. And Dow Theory essentially means that there's always three trends going on at the same time. The long-term bullish or bearish market, the intermediate trend, which is most of us as active traders watch, and then there's the day-to-day -day fluctuations. But in addition to that, um, and it's dated, the, the language is very dated, where he talks about um, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average and the transports must confirm each other. Now, obviously, the transports are not the major player that they were uh, back in the day when the whole market traded half a million shares in a day, but the principles still are the same. And we talk about this a lot in the order for masterclass where we're looking at the NASDAQ, the Dow and the S and P 500 as the three legs of the market. And if they're all doing the same thing, if they're all on the same page, meaning all of the buying or all of the selling is happening at, in the same direction with the same ferocity, uh, then you can um, feel, have conviction that the market is going to continue in that direction. However, there's, there's a other side of the coin that's called divergence. And divergence simply means, and I'll keep it as simple as possible, where let's say the Dow is making a new high for argument in any time frame, to make that clear. The Dow is making a new high, the S&P 500 is making a new high, but the NASDAQ's not. So in other words, you got new high, new high, and laggard. That is what's known as a divergence. And when a divergence happens, it doesn't necessarily mean trade in the other direction, but it means all of that money is not on the same page anymore. And it's, it's, it's a kind of like a caution or like a, a yellow light at a traffic light where something different's going on, where again, very similar to when we talk about exhaustion in our stocks, um, it's not necessarily a signal to trade in the opposite direction because if it's that obvious and it's, and it's kind of like it's going to slow down or, or it may reverse, it absolutely could reverse, but it's more like hmm, something changed here and your conviction level should get lower. So yesterday we actually saw that um, where the NASDAQ was lagging the rest of the market um, when the other, the other indices were kind of not as weak. Um, and we ended up getting heavy selling intraday. So when you learn to put those pieces together, I don't know where, that's like my dance move. <laughs> when you learn to put those pieces together, that's where you make the leap from chart reader to trader. Now, I'm, I'm constantly bringing up the differences between the two because I'm, I'm a tape reader, I'm a trader. I, and again, I said in a previous video, nobody opens a trading account to be the best chart reader on the planet. It's quite honestly, it's stupid because who cares if you're the greatest chart reader on the planet? You want to make money. Who cares if you have a CMT uh, designation? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but we're here to make money. So when you're when you're when you're reading the charts, that's fine. But you want to take it a step further, where you're building all of these pieces to build that argument for what your H A plus trade looks like. So that kind of takes us into today and yesterday's trading, actually, where you had all of these strong stocks that rolled over and were trading hard to the downside while the market um, was also pulling back. So the question was, do you, do you still continue to look for spots to buy those stocks uh, or do you just step aside and say they're going down right now and I'm not looking to be a short seller? Well, it kind of gets into a question that was asked um, uh, again in the chat yesterday, which is how do you handle when a stock you wanted to buy is going down? Now, the global answer, because I don't know you, right? But we want to talk. We want to. We want to get as in sync as possible, right? Um, the global answer is if it's going down, you don't. <laughs> if you went into the day and you wanted to be a buyer, it's infinitely easier 
and less stressful, again, you don't get all this gray hair, uh, <laughs> um, to say, I have one bias for the day in a particular stock. I want to be a buyer, as an example. So yesterday, a lot of stocks, casino stocks specifically, we were looking for them to get long yesterday. So they're probably a good example where they had uh, broke through a lot of levels. The LVS didn't break through. That was kind of more set and alert, but uh, wind definitely cleared the level uh, and a few other stocks, but they didn't follow through. So they pulled back. So generally speaking, when I'm looking to get long and specifically, again, getting that structure in your trading, when it trades and closes near the highs, generally speaking for a swing trade, I'm looking to for a buy stop above that level because I want confirmation that yesterday's big candle traded up and, and continues to move in that direction. So it's kind of like we talk about with failed breakouts, a breakout should continue and then you should see another well-bid candle uh, pushing to new highs, right? Uh, but if you get a breakout and an inside candlestick where here's it and you got inside, that that's not what you want to see. So the, the trade's off the table. So I was asked, what did I do in the casino stocks that I was looking to bid for yesterday? Uh, and nothing because they didn't follow through. They were trading to the downside. I didn't get confirmation on what I needed to see for the follow through. So again, if as we keep working together as a community, the whole point is building these if then scenarios and you'll ultimately get to this scenario where you'll notice ex quickly if there's something to do or if there's not something to do. Um, and that's an exciting place to be, although it becomes a little boring because there's going to be a lot of times where the market doesn't line up and you don't have a lot to do. And that doesn't matter if you're day trading or swing trading, excuse me, I adjust myself. Um, it's a good spot to be in because you have definitive criteria that says, that's what I'm looking for. And when I see that, I'm going to be all over it. When I don't see it, time for coffee, <laughs> right? Uh, so we're going to go to the charts right now, but before we do that, um, I want to talk about one of my favorite trading setups that's lining up today. Um, but I'm not going to trade it because there's earnings on the stock today. And I, I kind of tend to stay away from stocks the day of the earnings and get a little bit more aggressive the day after because I let all the wiggles and jiggles play out after hours, let everybody interpret what's going on. Then the next day, the next week, the next three months, you can generally get nice order flow in that direction, something I might more call a position trade. But the earnings that are scheduled pre-market today are MasterCard, Boeing, General Electric, and ADP. Scheduled after hours today, again, it's April 29th, 2020. Microsoft, Tesla, Facebook, Qualcomm, and eBay. And Facebook's the one that I want to take a look at. We go over to the charts right now. Uh, um, it's the setup that I love. And again, you can see all the criteria for the setup, how I adjusted the chart as it kept moving higher, and what it did the last two days to set up the trade, uh, and then ultimately um, what it's going to look like today. So we're going to do a very quick analysis of the market. Uh, and then we're going to get into the trade. So we're going to obviously go over to the SPY. That's the one that we've been watching. We have that line in the sand in the SPY. And I'm going to go out to the weekly chart because that's what we're looking for. I was looking at, <clears throat> at this level because this was the breakout level. Technically, the SPY last week was well offered, which that's not bullish. That's not what we want to see. We want to see more of this, right? So again, something changed. We're learning to read the tapes. Something changed. So in my mind, if you look at the top on the chart here, two... 87.30 was the high of this week from two weeks ago. So to me, this breakout needed to stay above that level as my line in the sand for reading the tape. And we actually broke that yesterday to the downside. So, hmm, although we closed green, something changed. Now we didn't close above that level. Uh, exactly. So actually two, what was the number again? I'm sorry. 287.30. Yesterday we closed at 280. 573. So we failed on the breakout. So it's going to be super interesting today. And let's get to the line in the sand that we're watching for the week is do we end up getting a bearish U-turn in the market, which happens when you trade through the previous highs, pull back and start to see a red candle. Uh, so the opening price that we're watching like a hawk now is 285.12. So that's the bigger picture in the market. We're technically still well bid which if you didn't watch today's Stocks for Breakfast, definitely watch it because I walked through all of this from a trading perspective. Uh, but we're still well bid. So we might have a conflict here, even though we're positive pre-market, and we'll get into the futures in a second. Um, even though we're positive from a well bid perspective, that level is a big level to tell us, are we forming a different market? So the point that I want to get across is, did we see a short-term 
top in this momentum or did we see a long-term top in this momentum because a lot of good news um, came out and we saw nasty selling intraday. If you're not sure what I was talking about by that, um, this is what I'm talking about. <sighs> you might not be able to know that number from the market because it doesn't look like a giant move to the downside, but this was pretty vicious. If you experienced it during the day, you're like, whoa, it just happened. Even though we were on it, in a chat room, we were discussing it where Tom, uh, one of the members in the room is like, ah, this is not lining up. Am I seeing that right? And he was spot on. Uh, so nice job, Thomas. Um, so anyway, that's what we're looking at in the, in the bigger picture. So what does that mean for today? Well, we did have a bearish U-turn in the SPY. We need to stay above the yesterday's low to uh, and ultimately try and make a new high. So we continue the string of well-bid candlesticks. But this was nasty. And if we take a look at the volume, we did have an increase in volume compared to the last two days and specifically the breakout. So what does that mean? That means that the tape is telling us something is changing. So getting back to what I said about Dow theory, it's not turning the entire thing, but what is interesting from a trading perspective is that we rallied for five weeks on bad news. It's, it's horrible. It's getting worse. And it absolutely did, but we kept going higher. Now we had good news and we got selling. Hmm. What is that telling us? Right? All right. So anyway, getting into some trades today, we would like to, uh, one trade that's not triggering yet, but I want to keep an eye on, uh, is hog. And we're going to pull up the volume again, just to get a picture of, look at that. That is technically what we are going to call, um, fuel. So remember large body candlestick is energy, but fuel is when you get a large body candlestick with massive volume breaking out of a trading range. So the play in hog right now is we need to see it stay above this 21, 22 levels. Now, because it keeps getting up to 21 and failing 22, I want to see it get above 23, but that's an interesting one to keep in your tracking journal. Uh, so not yet is really the interesting thing there. So cake is another one, a uh, very similar criteria where it did double its normal volume popped out. Keep that in your uh, watch list, but for some actual, oh, actually I want to get to the, the trade that, um, that I was most interested in. So Facebook, as we said, has earnings. So what I love about considering Facebook as a buy and the exact opportunity I'd be looking for, and you can see it's actually up big pre-market. I'd be looking for this to trade lower into this trend line before it actually popped. But because it has earnings, I'm not going to um, see that opening today. Another trade we're looking at day trade as well as swing trade is IMMU. Continuing to hold these bullish gaps traded positive from the open with the market getting shellacked yesterday and also at a breakout level. Use your own judgment about um, volatility if you want to be involved with that one, but I like the swing trade setup. Uh, some other stocks, COP in is a uh, breakout level now. Can it stay above this level? Again, having a buy stop above that level. You got some room going 46 is the next level. So roughly seven, eight dollars. So obviously we're going to take a look at that. We need to look at CVX and Exxon Mobil as well. Sector is perking up a little bit, not quite breaking out yet though. It's not quite out of the woods. Obviously oil is still in the news, but definitely interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, DD was another one that was called out in the room yesterday. Awesome job by everybody calling this one out. We have this now, it's actually well bid one, two, three, four, five days in a row and an expansion in volatility the last two days. Uh, also an expansion in volume yesterday. So uh, DD going into today on Wednesday, I'm looking for a flat opening and a push higher and for profit taking to come in. It is not a scenario to enter a new long here. It's a scenario where you want to feed the ducks when they're quacking. If this opens flat and pushes higher. I would be selling into that area. I call that a saturation play where in this case, the buying pressure has saturated. Uh, next, a uh, few more on the long side. I don't have any good setups on the short side, quite honestly. Uh, ENPH also breaking out with some room to go. So we're looking for it to buy stop above 44, looking for it to get up to the 58 level. Uh, next, we have DHI as some more opportunities. The one about this is it, it meets the criteria, but I personally would not be trading it because of all of the inconsistencies on the daily chart. And what I mean by that is look at all these melted candles. You don't see a lot of institutional activity from one day to the next, despite the fact that it meets the criteria. I actually put this one in the list to show you that stock could meet the criteria, but not necessarily be a trade. Uh, that's very important as well. Uh, home builders are actually perking up as a group. I wanted to point those out to everybody. So you can see Lennar. Uh, we have KBH. Also, you can see it broke that longer term trend line. Toll Brothers as well. 
uh, not as strong Toll Brothers, and Pulte, PHM. All of them actually forming these nice higher highs, higher lows. We're kind of slowly drifting to the upside. Um, I like them as a little bit longer term position trade because we're starting to see some activity there. Uh, another long in a stock that's been really good to trade, uh, day trade specifically, we've been getting these really nice big green candles on an intraday basis. Just to give you an idea, uh, we've been getting these nice flood of buying in the open. Uh, ARM, uh, Aramac, if you've ever been to a stadium, they're actually one of the largest people that you see in the background when you go to you buy a hot dog and a beer and their signs are all over the back. Uh, I remember when I used to go to Shea Stadium all the time, my Mets hat, uh, their sign was everywhere. So what I do like is the fact that it's breaking out and getting above new levels. I don't like the fact to buy it now uh, because it just expanded in volatility over the last five to six days. But what is awesome is you're getting a push and a pause, a push and a pause and a push. We're looking for a pause now and then the next run to almost $10 profit target up to 26. So it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds as well. So you can see what I'm looking for. Push, pause, push, pause, push. Looking for a pause, and if it pulls back even to 24, that sets up a $12 move uh, to the upside. And last but not least, we have Skechers. SKX, very similar type price action. Next move up to 34. So again, good, solid push up here. This would be one, if I did initiate it, uh, it would be a buy stop looking for that next push to the upside. So some big earnings today. Uh, one that, oh, actually one that I want to pull up before we finish is W, Wayfair. Uh, again, we wrote about it, talked about it a little bit yesterday. We said to be looking to book profits in these online retailers. Uh, we did get a pullback. Again, some really good news. I mean, the stock's up 500% here. Um, you can Again, it's never too high, never too low, but I wanted to just revisit. The casino stocks did not trigger new longs yesterday, and we did see some profit taking in these online retailers yesterday. So um, let's, it's interesting. We have an inside candlestick there after a breakout, which I just said a few minutes ago. Breakout should follow through, but we had massive volume. We had an exhaustion candle followed by an inside candlestick. I'd be expecting that to pull, that, pull back for a little bit to look for a new swing trade long. So if you happen to be long, moving up that trailing stop is probably the uh, ideal situation when you get that expansion in volatility, expansion in volume. You get exhaustion, profit taking starts to come in, that buying pressure starts to uh, slow down and you get natural pullback. You know, Jesse Livermore said that in reminiscences of a stock operator. It's natural for the market to do this. It's not natural for something to just go straight up without a pullback. 500% is a lot. I'm never saying it's too high or too low, but um, not shocking that we're seeing a little bit of exhaustion and pullback. So I uh, got a lot of earnings today. Uh, we're expecting some good volatility again today, uh, which is awesome. Especially, We had a really good day in the room yesterday. Um, good activity, which was exciting to see. Uh, and then some big earnings today. So look at your calendar, decide if you want to trade them before or after. I just read off the whole list. If you find these videos helpful, absolutely click down and uh, subscribe. That would be awesome. Also, if you have a comment or if you have something that you'd like us to um, review, leave a comment as well below the video. We'll get to that as soon as possible. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe and let's make some money tonight.